Hey guys and welcome to this tutorial series and uh, it's going to be like my geometry nodes course where I update it constantly with new content. Yeah, so if you just getting here, uh, make sure to come back and check out for new check it out for new content. Okay, so yeah, what we're going to be trying to make is uh, this particle emission uh, that I did. Uh, you can see it's uh, different versions of it, but I just have a hand just emitting some particles. It's a very simple set setup. You emit particles and then you add uh, a shield uh, here. Now you might want to use a particle system for this but uh, the particle system uh, because it doesn't render the particles directly. For example if I have a plane with the particle system these particles don't render directly in cycles or in Eevee. You have to use an object like a cube uh, then use that as the instance, that's the object that is rendered. Now the problem with that is that now what would have been just one particle, that one particle is going to be made out of however many vertices this cube is made out of and uh, that's going to be multiplied by the number of particles. So if you have a million particles, it's now going to be 8 million vertices in your scene which is going to be significantly slower at render instead of just one particle for one particle. That's why you're going to be using geometry nodes because rendering this requires a lot of particles. Uh, so we're going to need quite a lot. And uh, also geometry nodes gives us a lot of control uh, that the particle system doesn't give us. So this whole setup is made out of uh, three major parts. Uh, we have the emitter, we have the turbulence force, and then we have the shield or the colliders, uh, including the ground. And uh, if you take a look at uh, my project file, which should be provided, yeah, you see that I'm also emitting uh, lights because I'm rendering with Eevee. Uh, Eevee, unfortunately, doesn't uh, do mesh lighting. It does it, but it's, it's not high quality enough to give us the lighting I needed. I uh, instanced some lights onto the points uh, to get that effect. Let's take a look at the setup we, we need. Let me just borrow the hand. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to come in here. The first thing I did is add a vertex group uh, for the hands, for the palm. Uh, that way I can emit uh, from the palms. But uh, you'll see in some other examples, I'm not emitting from the fingerprints, from the from the fingers. I'm emitting from the palm itself. Uh, you can see here the whole palm is emitting. So that's going to depend on what you, on what you want. Uh, there are variations of this effect like this here, uh, where we have a, a lot of particles being emitted and with some turbulence. And uh, here we have a pulsating effect. And I just look at the waves is creating uh, patterns is creating on the ground. Uh, I have uh, also here, this is much faster uh, with more energy. And uh, there is also this. Uh, all project files are going to be provided uh, for you. So let's start with uh, this here. Uh, emitting from uh, the tips here. Just create a vertex group for the tips. We can create a new object like a plane, then bring in our arm. I uh, should be under here. So this here, I set it relative. And uh, now, yeah, this is what we have. Uh, let me hide the original hand. Just take a look at this. Okay, we can distribute points. You can distribute points on faces. But uh, remember, we had about a group and uh, we can get that vertex group using the named attribute. So uh, which was I think palm. If you take a look at this geometry and uh, take a look at this you can see that our fingertips are selected. So we can use that as our selection for the particles. Let me increase the density to 500 uh, just like that. And uh, all we need to do to turn this into particles is use a simulation zone. Uh, if you don't know what the simulation zone, you can check out my geometry nodes course. Uh, it explains most of these in detail. Let me also add my uh, shortcuts so that you can see what I'm doing. So the simulation zones zone runs on every frame. So whatever you have inside here is going to be recalculated on every frame. So if we use the join geometry uh, to add and uh, use these points into uh, this geometry, we can basically add points on every frame. And uh, since our hand is moving, uh, the position of these points is also going to move, uh, which is perfect. But uh, we also want them to be pushed out. So I'm going to just use a simple set position. Uh, which direction is this? That would be the Y, so positive Y, uh, maybe negative Y, negative point 
and you can see now these particles are being emitted going in this direction just like that now we don't want it to just be straight like that i don't want to see this pattern i want things to be more random so i can change the seed which is going to change the position of uh those vertices when they are emitted on every frame so to do that i'm going to use a time node and get and use the frame as uh, the seed so on each frame we get particles in different positions just like that to break up the pattern uh just a bit now you see that in my version in the original i have some turbulence uh basically yeah some bit of wavy effect so let's uh add that and uh, turbulence is basically noise applied as force uh so i'm going to create that so let's use a noise texture and i use another set position i can apply this as the offset and we get something like that the noise usually comes with an offset so let's tra subtract that to center the noise so 0.5 now you can see instead of going up everything is staying in position our noise is too strong so i can use the the scale value and scale it down maybe by 0.5 uh, let's do point yeah, 0.5 uh, the frequency is too high so let me use a low frequency so that we have large waves uh, just uh, like that I think that's interesting but uh, one thing you will notice is that we start to see some patterns forming all the particles are following uh, similar paths uh, like that uh, which is which doesn't look great maybe that's what you want but uh, if you want to break that up uh, you can animate this noise now you might be tempted to use 4d noise because it gives you this value that lets you animate the value but uh, if you take a look at the timing timings you can see that this increases the calculation time significantly if it's 3d you can see we're using 7.4 microseconds but when you change it to 4d it almost uh, triples uh, that so let's keep it to 3d and instead use the position position as the coordinates of this noise right now is what it's using already so if we use uh, the position uh, if we connect the position we won't see any changes uh, but uh, we can now add we can now manipulate this by uh, maybe animating the y value or the z value we can even try scaling uh, this up maybe down and uh, you can see we'll get something uh, quite different uh, so i'm also going to animate this value using a time node maybe animate this uh using the frame so we'll get some bit of animation let me just bring this back to one to a scale of one uh you can see now how our noise is uh how, how this breaks up our pattern okay so we have our turbulence we have our emission now let's work on uh, the shield so the shield can be anything uh, let's try start simple by using a sphere and we can even make it a half sphere uh yeah let's make it a half sphere just like that and uh, let's add it into one uh, collection so that we use anything in that collection as uh, a collider okay so i can bring this in the whole collection and i can hide this for now and uh, set this to relative and uh, since these are real instances we need to realize them first and uh, the way we're going to to set up the collider we're going to use uh geometry proximity so use the proximity node and uh, it gives you the position so if this pot if any of these points come close to to the collider they'll get the collision point position of at uh, that point so i'm going to use a set position and use that position as the new position so if we play back uh, we basically get the effect we want uh these points uh, when they come into contact with uh, the shield they stick to the collider but uh, we are losing the emission point so immediately when they are emitted they are pushed directly to uh, the sphere which is not what we want we want them to hit the sphere only when the distance is maybe less than zero so let's do that fortunately this node here also gives us the distance of each particle from the sphere so we can use that to use create a selection so use a compare node to say if the distance is less than let's say 0 0.01 then those points should up should get uh, the position we are setting so these particles will move and when they get to the sphere you should see that yeah the collisions are 
walking. Perfect. Uh, now let's also set up the shading in next lesson. So 